Are braces rearing their ugly heads with the ATF again? This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms. And the answer is yes. Is it a bad thing? Not so much. What the ATF has done is reverse themselves again on the braces for the AR or AK type pistols. Are they closing a loophole? I'm sure they are. What they did was refer back to the origin of the brace where some manufacturer or gun dealer, whoever said, hey, can I use this legally for people that have a physical disability and have trouble holding a heavy pistol? And, you know, essentially the ATF said yes. Now, what they wound up doing is making a determination that if it had some of these neat rubbery kind of things that look like they're wrapped around the forearm, but if you didn't use them on the forearm, kind of made a shoulder stock. The determination was the intent was to actually use it as a rifle and therefore it is no longer a pistol. Now, before I go any further, let's start with, um, I'm not a rules lawyer. I'm not any lawyer. I did go through the 290 odd pages, but if you really want to know more info, by all means, consult an attorney, go to the ATF website, pull up everything. Now, are they banning every single brace? The answer is no. And they're not really banning them either. And I don't feel like going through the list of which ones are being affected. And, you know, they did go through some hemming and hawing over Should we do this? What about, you know, if somebody says they have a disability, can they prove it? So they can continue to use the brace as is. And, you know, to their credit, the ATF said, well, you know, gun dealers really are not in the position to make a medical determination. Um, I mean, I could, you know, if you happen to shoot yourself, I can go, yeah, there's a bullet hole there. So... They've decided just to take that out of the mix. And they're giving you an opportunity to fix the problem. They are not doing this like they did with bump stocks. They're illegal. Turn them in. We're not giving you any money for it. That's not happening this time. So in the case of the pistols with the braces, you've got a bunch of options. Option one. You can remove the brace and alter it or damage it so that it can no longer be reattached to the pistol. Okay, so you have the option of destroying your property. Um, You can destroy the weapon. Not a great circumstance. I mean, you paid money for this thing. Although if you do decide to do that, the ATF does have somewhere in one of their extensive documents exactly where you need to make the cuts for an AR receiver and how much material you need to remove. So those first two options really kind of suck. You can turn it into the ATF. They won't give you any money for it, but you can do it. That keeps you from being in violation of the law. Also a crappy um, option. Now, the two options that are the most viable, and I'm going to give you the worst one first, which is take your pistol and convert it into a full-size rifle, which means putting on a 16-inch or longer barrel. Then you're perfectly compliant with the law. Boring, right? And you're going, Alan, what a load of crap. I'm not doing that shit. And I agree with you. So what you can do, and this is where it gets weird, so don't get angry, don't wander off of the podcast, but what you can do is register the affected weapon as an SBR according to the National Firearms Act. And now you're going to go, Alan, that sucks too because I got to pay 200 bucks for these. And some of you may have several of these items in different calibers. So the answer is, does it suck? Not really. For the first time that I can recall, the ATF is allowing you to register these pistols as SBRs 
free of charge. No $200 tax stamp involved. Really kind of cool. Um, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, you don't have to pay the $200 tax stamp. Right there, all by itself, it's an issue. You know, you've saved 200 bucks. And I know people that have three, four, and five of these things. You know, 300 blackout, 9 millimeter, 40 cal, 5.56, five, you know, whatever. So what you do need to do is get photographs and fingerprints, just like you would if you were buying any other Class 3 item. And, you know, for those of you that don't want the government knowing what you got, well, it's a compromise. Because if you had bought a silencer or an SBR, you'd still have it. Meaning you'd still be paying 200 bucks for this thing. So, you're going to fill out three Form 1s if you have three of these weapons. Now, the advantage to this is you can get rid of that piece of garbage brace... Unless for some reason you are sold on having one on it. Personally, I like the SBR uh, or short-barreled rifle configuration, which is a folding or a collapsible stock. It's a lot more useful than a stupid wrist brace. But that's my opinion, and you can tell me I'm wrong. So the next step from here is, well, how do you do it? Well, it's actually kind of simple. You can Google... ATF e forms. It takes you to a, a home page and it says e forms. And if you've ever bought any of the class three stuff using e forms, like a silencer or whatever, you should already have, you know, a user ID, password, and PIN. If you don't have one, all you need to do is create an e forms account. And there's a button for that. It says register. You, you know, put in the vital info. Um, I think. It's been a while since I've done this, but I think there's a check to make sure the email is working. Um, once you get done with that, right across the right side of the page is a red bar that says click here for ATF final rule 2021R-08F. And a little blurb above it says, please click on the red button, which is what I just read off to you, to submit an e-form 1. So this is actually a form 1. So this is creating a short-barreled rifle out of your pistol. Then it's going to take you through a whole bunch of steps. And, you know, the pages are a little clunky. It does take some time to load. So you just have to be patient. I mean, not a big deal. Even as a gun dealer, I get tired of seeing the spinning wheel while it says loading. Okay, now once you get there, you're going to have to do unique and exciting things. Like, uh, fill out your name, address, phone number, whatever, um, the item in question, which is going to have to be, you know, you'll be the model number, manufacturer, and serial number. And what you're going to do is create this. So it's almost as if you're manufacturing it. So what the ATF is doing is instead of allowing people to like outright violate the law, they're actually giving you a chance to do something really kind of cool. Now, when you go to do the documentation, obviously you have to set up, um, you have to get fingerprints and basically passport photos, which you can do at a lot of places like Walgreens and some other drug stores. I know they do it around here because um, that's where I got mine. When you work on the form, you'll have to submit a copy of your photograph. So, you know, basically just scan it or take a picture of it. And you're going to upload that. You can't upload the fingerprints, even though it says you have to. There's no way we can actually upload fingerprints because we don't have the ability to save the document the way the government wants it. So, what you'll do is uh, one of the final steps is it's going to print out a page of everything you need to do. And everything you need to do is going to be things like, in an envelope, include the fingerprint cards, the photographs, the document that goes along with it that you know says what you need to include. 
And for those of you that have gun trust, you might want to use that. For those of you that do not have a gun trust and want to file it as an individual, go ahead. Quite frankly, um, the ATF has said that gun trusts actually take longer to process or purchasing a weapon with a gun trust takes longer because they have to background check everybody. And everybody on the trust has to fill out a responsible person questionnaire. So now you're going, Alan, you know, you're not helping me here. Well, true. But then again, I'm not the one trying to get a Form 1 for a free SBR from an AR pistol. A lot of gun dealers, including myself, are helping people out by doing something simple, meaning you want to call up, we can walk you through the steps. Um, If you want to come in, I'll walk you through the steps in person. But the biggest advantage of this thing is you get to go from a crappy pistol with a sucky brace to an SBR and you don't have to pay a $200 tax stamp to do it. So those are your options. I would take advantage of them. Now you're going to go, well, how much time do I have? Well, The ATF says you will have 120 days from the time it enters the federal register. I saw this on Friday. My guess would be it goes into the register at some point um, this week being um, today was Martin Luther King Day. So somewhere around 17th to 20th of January 2023, it'll go in there. My advice is get started on it because you can interrupt the paperwork meaning you can save it until you're ready to you know move on so let's say you decided to get started only you're sitting at work at a computer and you're not sitting where you have the serial number and model number of your weapon so you can fill it out and save it up to that point because it'll save it as a draft And then when you get home or whatever, um, get the information you need to finish filling out the rest of the form. And next part is you're going to go, well, where do I get fingerprints from? Well, also a damn good question. It says a responsible person has to do the fingerprints. I'd like to think that if you own a firearm, you are indeed a responsible person. You just have to make sure you put it in the correct format Um, some sheriff's departments may do it for you for a fee. Some of them, because of COVID are only doing it by appointment. So, you know, call around if you need to, if you have a local gun dealer that is willing to sit down with you, or, you know, let's say you want to give me a call and I can sit on a screen with you and just kind of run you through the steps. I'll be happy to do so. Okay. Okay. So, interesting piece of news. As far as I'm concerned, it's good news. The bad news part of it, aside from the options that really suck, the bad news part is you're probably looking at the end of the AR or AK pistols. Because they're probably just all going to become short-barreled rifles. So, from a gun dealer perspective, it's still a sale for me. From a person perspective, it sucks for you because it's after the 120 days, so we're talking about four months. After that time runs out, it's going to cost you 200 bucks to do that for each weapon. So, find a good stock. Fill out the Form 1. And be the proud owner of one or more SBRs. Now, what I do not know is what the manufacturers and distributors are doing at this point. Because once it hits the federal register, they can't sell them anymore. And I do not know if they're going to sell them now until it hits the federal register. The only thing I can say is, you know, call around and see what Some of the people have to say, you may find some dealers that have them in stock 
However, once it goes into the Federal Register, 